Good morning. This is the second Sunday in Advent, and fittingly, we are here at uh, the beautiful Church of St. Mark the Evangelist in Hadlow Down. Uh, our Gospel this morning begins the Gospel of St. Mark, and so that's why it's quite fitting to be here this morning. Uh, our Sunday services are open today, and so uh, the, we have the full uh, reign of services going on uh, from uh, 8 o'clock to 11.15. And uh, we would love to have you join us uh, for worship there. Now, for some of you, I know uh, that you're still in uh, situations that require you to exercise caution. And let me encourage you to, uh, to be your own judge of your circumstances. And as uh, we know that there are some who are unable to join us for a while, uh, we will continue with these uh, videos and hopefully with some music and other content uh, to keep you connected with our worship life of the church while uh, being somewhat isolated in your homes. And we understand that and we're praying for you. Uh, this morning, we're gonna be looking at the first um, eight or so verses of St. Mark. And so you may wanna have that open before you. Um, I don't know that there are many other announcements to make. Um, so let's just take a moment now to prepare our hearts for worship. I'm going to invite my young friend to come up and give me a hand in lighting up the Advent wreath. <clears throat> For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Through the mountains... Be Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. All right. And Simeon, how many candles are we lighting this morning? Uh, two. Two. All right. Will you join me over here? That one's not working. O oh, Heavenly Father, we light the second candle of Advent, remembering that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Let there be peace on earth. And Sim, will you read with me? The people, people who, who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. All right, thank you. And this morning's candle we, and lessons you might recognize as having the theme of peace. And it's a theme picked up on in uh, our wonderful Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, in that verse, O come, desire of nations bind, in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid thou our sad division cease, and be thyself our King of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. And so it is our prayer that God's peace would be made known amongst the nations. Our collect for this morning, Advent 2, goes like this. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And through Advent, we always repeat the collect for the first Sunday of Advent. And I would encourage you to print this one off and use it in your daily prayers. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, 
that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, now and ever. Amen. Our lesson this morning is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the first verse. In the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all of the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Spirit. Here endeth the lesson. We continue this Advent in a season of preparation. Advent means literally coming. And the lessons we have heard over the last few weeks have reminded us again and again that Christ is coming and we should be ready. Now, of course, we know that Jesus has come as a child in Bethlehem, but as John tells us in his gospel, he came unto his own and his own received him not. We might ask ourselves, will we be better prepared to receive him when he comes at his second coming? Now, the people of Israel had many sources of preparation they were given the law, handed down by Moses, which revealed the holiness of God, and they were to be his great people who revealed that better way to the nations around them. But no sooner had they received it than the people fell into idolatry. They received the land of Israel, a rich land in a desert, where God and man might dwell together and be a holy nation. But again, no sooner had they possessed that land then the people of Israel grew unsatisfied and wanted to be like the nations around them. God gave them David, a man after God's own heart, a king who revealed the majesty of God and what a glorious nation they might be when they praised God and rested in his favor. But again, after his death, they demanded the new king to give them new gods to worship. God gave them a temple a focal point, and a pattern of worship wherein he promised to meet them. But famously, when our Lord came to meet them there in that house of God, he found that they had reduced it to a den of thieves. Finally, God gave them the prophets to serve as witnesses to Israel, to challenge and comfort his people, challenging them by calling them to repentance and comforting them by reminding them of God's covenant promise that he would be their God and they would be his people, that despite their unfaithfulness, he would remain faithful, that he had not given up on his plan to rescue and redeem humanity, but that he was working throughout history to prepare his people for salvation. And again, while this was met with occasional success and repentance, it never lasted long. In our gospel lesson this morning, we hear from two prophets appointed by God to prepare the people. First, we hear the prophet Isaiah writing about seven centuries before Christ. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. You see, even at the last, God wants his people prepared to receive his son. And so he sent his servant, John the Baptist, to call the people of Israel to repent so that they might be ready to meet their savior. His message of how to prepare was clear. We are told that he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and that he pointed ahead to the Christ, the one who would follow him, the one John tells us who was mightier, 
the straps of whose sandals John was not worthy to stoop down and untie. Now we are in Advent, and our thoughts naturally turn to the birth of the little baby Jesus and his mother. But every year, our Advent lessons confront us with John the Baptist, a fiery, apocalyptic teacher who tells of the one to come, the one who will bring about the end of one world and usher in the kingdom of God. You see, as much as Advent is a season where we deal with practical matters relating to our celebration of Christmas, it is meant to help us get our spiritual lives tuned up so that we are ready when he comes back for good to conquer sin and death and hell and the devil once and for all. John the Baptist and Jesus the Christ preach the same message and ultimately they suffer the same fate. John is beheaded and Jesus is crucified, both at the whim of craven political leaders hanging on to their power desperately. They are killed because they posed a threat to the kingdom of this world. And you must admit, in this, Herod and Pontius Pilate were correct. Jesus had come to overthrow the powers of this world, but not quite how they imagined it. And so Advent prepares us not merely to welcome and worship the little baby Jesus, but also to bring about the spiritual regime change necessary for our salvation. Our Advent task is this, to heed the prophets and claim our covenant with God, to overthrow the spiritual strongholds that grip us, and to make room for Christ in our hearts and in our lives and in our homes, to prepare ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be temples ready to receive and adore him. What tools do we have for our preparation? What are our Advent tools to make us ready for Jesus' second coming? Well, we have the same as Israel, the law and the prophets. That is his word upon which we should meditate. We also have places and patterns of worship wherein God has promised to meet us. But we might reasonably ask, if Israel failed to be ready with all of these, what hope do we have? At the end of our gospel, when John points to the superiority of Christ in his ministry, he points to the source of strength that we have in this new kingdom. John says, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. On our own, we can lose our way very easily, just like the people of Israel. We lose track of the promises of God. We get enamored with what this world around us has to offer. We forget who we are in him. But Jesus has not left us alone. Jesus has given us a helper to keep us on track, to keep us in the promises of God, to remind us who we are in him. He has given us the Holy Spirit to prepare us through the word and through the company of saints. So in our Advent journey, we must pray. Pray that God the Holy Spirit would prepare us to receive him. We must search the scriptures for those things which might sanctify us. And we must gather together as Christians around the throne of God and bring our worthy praise to the one who is able. May we be found a people ready for his second coming this Advent and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In our time of prayer, let us take a moment to remember before God any concerns that we have on our hearts. And so we remember in our parish this morning those who we know to be in need. We pray for Father David as he recovers from surgery. And we continue to pray for Norman Longley, Lindsay and Wilbs George. We pray for Jane Godfrey, 
And we pray for the families of Jeremy Clark and Pat Donovan. Let me invite you to remember before God any concerns that you have. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant us, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and, and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And let me invite you to say the grace with me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>